Okay. So just to explain what we're doing. So these are the people that started the church with us 10 years ago. And we're just going to ask them questions, general questions. And if at any point you, you do have a question to ask them, please feel free to stop and ask. I'm just going to take this seat here. But then you can go ahead and ask the first question. Um, the first question is, how has the church grown since you joined? How has the church grown since you joined? And if nobody wants to speak, audience, feel free to nominate somebody to answer the question. I think that one should actually go to pastor. Why? Because ours is good. The title of pastor is not in this one. Okay, let's just. <laughs> okay, how, how, how many minutes? Feel free. When when not enough time, we'll let you know. Okay, okay, I'll 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 do it. Praise the Lord. And you, uncle, you can even start with you know your like how is the church okay. going? To, tell us about when you came to this church. Okay, I can do it quick. Thank God they taught us how to do something when we did comprehension. In <laughs> when we do exam, why? We will do the, uh, I'm just going to do a quick um, um, summary. Um, I think we started at Blackton Road. Uh, well, I think it was just this Sunday week. And we didn't even, I didn't know it was the first Sunday. Um, we just went in and we, I didn't realize it was the first Sunday that the church actually started. But we went in there and to the glory of God, it's been, it was, it was um, I don't want to use the word turbulence because I, that, that, that's not, it has to be strong. It was challenging. Challenging is the word. We had times where we were locked out. We had times where the whole we it was it was, it was we had issues. But one thing we did was we had to come to church every Saturday to get the church ready for Sunday. After we finish on Sunday, we we'll pack all the chairs again and we are ready. And that went on for quite a few bit. And then we got kicked out of the hall. And then we became nomadics. We went from one family house to the other family house and we had services in various homes and then we went to this place that was like almost dilapidated building. You know, we had times when we came to church on Sunday and we had lost all our uh, musical equipment and everything. So we had challenges, but one thing for certain was there was no Sunday we did not have our service one and there was no Sunday we said, okay, because we don't have a place to serve, we will, that was one thing God did for us. It was faithful. God was really faithful. We went to a place before we came here. And eventually, he settled us down here. And one thing that, that, key, that is key is the fact that when we came here, we had the opportunity to be able to come to the video here on Fridays, last Friday and stuff like that. So I don't know if I've done a good job to yeah, summarize yeah. it. Honestly, but it was, it was, it was while I don't have to use the word turbulent, it was undulating, it was good and it was okay. And we just give glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I just want to add that as Uncle Bim, Uncle, you were speaking, I feel like I don't even remember all of this. <laughs> and that's why God has been so good because we've actually been through all of that and even some things that Uncle didn't mention, but we just thank God. Um, we'll just take, does any, we'll just ask one of the youths how the church has grown since they came because they were like this when the church started. <laughs> How's the church going since you came? God has blessed us with our own place that we can, that we don't need to be packing up every night before and afterwards. <laughs> well, I remember Mami and Tito me, they, when they first came, I can't remember how old I was, but I just remember that Tito and your mommy used to just run from one corner of the room to the other corner, like, you know, um, the, the children now. But it's nice to see how everybody has grown and, you know, they've taken on different roles in the church. Because when we first started, um, my experience was that our families were the choir, our families were the usher, our families were everything. So it's just nice to see that in our church now, God has just blessed us. I think we were talking about Christmas, the events team were talking about Christmas, and I was like, oh, suggesting that, oh, make sure to contact my uncle, because we're usually using him every year. And they were like, oh, we don't need to do that. We have everybody that we need. And it just completely slipped my mind, because every year when we are planning Christmas, 
we always have to go outside to get instrumentalists. But God has just been so merciful. So thank you, Richard, Evangelist, all the choir, everyone that's, that has come together for us. Um, the next question is, how has the church edified you and others spiritually? How has the church edified us yeah. and others spiritually? Because of consistency. I mean, um, to be honest, I, uh, this is not the first church for me to pass for. Um, when we talk of edification, because there's consistency, when I was under someone, if I would only do what he asked me to do. But this one, because I just have to do what I have to do. So the consistency makes it to be, to equip me. It's compulsory for me to open my Bible daily. It's compulsory for me to do a few things every day. So that is what, where it edifies me because I have to take up a role. Thank you. Thank you. And this is an important question for everybody in the church, not just here, because how has the church edified us is important because the people watching us talk now, it shows that, you know, after five, ten years, you can look at your life and be sure that you will be edified by coming to this church. I can speak for myself that when I first started this church, I wasn't where I needed to be in my spiritual walk, and God has really taught me a lot through here. And I remember that when I wanted to start my serious walk with God, I had a community through this church to you know, build my spiritual life. So this church was there for me. We have Bible study, we have prayer. So when I needed something, or when I needed a community, I had a community. So all those things that we might kind of look at now and think, oh, we don't need those resources, the hope in heaven, the hymns in the open heaven. I used to think, why are there hymns in the open heaven? Mm -hmm. But when God taught me about, you know, songs that he loves, you know, these were things that were available to me when I needed it. Um, Uncle Richard, do you have a question? Yes. Um, I, I was just going to ask, because um, being a member of, of, the, of the church, the gym especially, have you had times that um, you feel like someone as a member is not pulling up and you feel like you want to beat them in mentoring them. I, I do not mean you physical. Like that you feel like, oh, Brother Richard, you should have known better than this. And have you seen changes in such people? That's a very good question. Very, very good question. When we, we started, and um, I was the, I was the, um, Sunday school teacher, I was the announcer, I was the... So one day I went to visit my father in the Lord and he said, oh, I have to talk to him. And I said that, and he wants to say, you're going to die one day, just like uh, Moses' father-in-law told him, that you're going to die. Let someone start doing it. And when I called Vicky to say, you're going to start the Sunday school, he said, no, I can't. Ah, no. And the day, I, I just kept praying, the day he took it, he took it so better, so you understand. So every time, Initially, it was like I was dragging people, but when they caught up, they, everyone, they were doing their best. They, I mean, people were, you see that people know what they do in the Bible now. You know that they want to prepare for the message. Whether they're even preparing now for the message or not, they know what to do with their Bible. So it's been, it's been a very good journey. Thank you. Yeah, I want to speak to my young man. I know you started this church from being a little boy. Um, how do you think sitting on that um, button, you know, what, what sort of uh, feeling do you have when you're making yourself useful? Well, some now, some boys now are still sleeping from hanging out overnight mm -hmm. last night. When you come in here and uh, you pull, you push the button while others say, you know, go home, do this. How do you feel doing this compared to other people who are not in the church? I mean, to to make you see the value you carry within you yourself. Uh, it gets me paid out that it just makes me feel good knowing that I'm doing something that is benefiting the church, which I know that will hundred percent benefit me somehow or somewhere in the future. So I just feel that. It's just better this way that I'm sort of finding a way to help help at the church. It may not be much, but I still think it's all good. Um, the next question is, what is something that you will 
think the church does really well. Um, and we're just saying, you know, I'm what do you feel like the church does really well? Can we believe we eat? And <laughs> <laughs> we're going to eat today. This church, we can eat. Praise the Lord. I'm eating. Hallelujah. But what, what is one thing we do? I, I think to a large extent we pray. For, um, yeah, we, we pray. We. I mean, we gather Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and because we're a small family too, there's hardly anybody that is not doing anything for God. So, yeah, so I think it's one thing, we, we pray. Can I, can I add to what you just said? I think another thing that I see in this church is, the church, is very, they are very supportive. You can we kind of rely on each other. You have a crying shoulder. You don't have to run elder sketcher. That is the uniqueness of um, the church here. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much. Um, what made you join the church? What made my family? Um, I, I used to work with a lady um, in one of the hospitals, and one day she called me up to say, You live in Hambe? And said, They said, Oh, there's a pastor friend of mine that's just coming to Hambe. And I said, um, But let's make it like, for example, more personal. Like, why did you. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. So because the question is, you answer the question correctly, but in terms of what made you stay and keep coming, because you know we have people that they come and then we don't see them again. So why? What's the question? Why did you join the church? Right? So why did you join and why did you stay? In the in personal, personal. Why did you miss stay? Because there's always food. Well, because as a family, um, my family though, I can speak for myself, my husband and my kids. Why did we stay? We stayed because we wanted to be a part of something. We were, I mean, Back in the day, we used to feel, I used to particularly feel that uh, I didn't want to be a part of a startup church. I wanted to just go to a large church, blah, blah, blah. But then, coming to Fruit Tabernacle at the time, we were not even Fruit Tabernacle at the time. Um, we were thrown of, thrown of grace and, and fruitfulness. Um, um, but we just came, and I think our spirits just settled in. That's the first thing I would say. And... Uh, we found that we were growing, myself and my husband, we were growing spiritually. So it felt like home. Does that answer? Yeah. yeah. And I'll just ask the question as well, like for myself personally, why? <laughs> I have no choice. But <laughs> 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 I have no choice. I didn't have a choice, but um, you know, I found myself asking this question. I can't remember why, but sometimes the Holy Spirit just puts questions in my mouth, and I found myself asking a few weeks ago, "Do I like my church?" And the answer I gave to the Holy Spirit was, "Yes, I really like my church." And I was looking at all the different reasons I like my church, and I like it because of the community. I prefer smaller churches to large churches where you just get lost in the crowd. No one's, you know, you didn't come, no one, you know. But I like this church because we do have a community. We do have, you know, there's always somebody you can talk to. You know, you have people that you can pray with. You have people that, you know, have been through that situation that can speak to you. And I've been blessed to have families here that when I was going through different things, they, they took me in, they, 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 they cared for me, they listened to me and all those different things. So it's, it's really good and this is a safe place. You know, and another reason I like this church is because God is in this church. Yes. You know, so many things, when I look at my life just from this year, there's so many things that God has done. And it's not because of anything per se that things are happening, but it's just having this church every Sunday, like Uncle Pimbo said, 
there hasn't been a Sunday we haven't had this church going on, despite everything that has happened. So God is really in this church, and you know, I like the name um, that we had, Throne of Grace. I, ha- I like Fruitful Tabernacle that will always be fruitful in this church. Amen. Amen. Um, you've kind of already answered the first half of this question, but um, the question is, since joining the church, what has improved, and what can we as a church do better? And if the so Tommy's struggling, I feel like you can just talk yeah. about the children's church because that's a big one yeah. that has improved and okay. it's getting better. Yeah. Well, what what I can say is that for the children's church, my experience of before we had the children's church, I can't remember how many children we had, but we didn't have that many. But I can say that as soon as that children, the, the day that that children's class opened, it was like children just formed in. And <laughs> yeah. yes, they swarmed. They, they, the, the children started coming in. We started having families. We had the triplets. We had the of the twins. That like, children just started coming in. People had children. And my experience from that that I can take is that we shouldn't try to make, do things perfectly. That like, even if we just start, God will do everything. So it just brought to my mind that we should just be doing everything in each department and that, that will open doors for other people because if we didn't start the children's church, we wouldn't have anywhere to house the children that came in after that time. So God, God was just the best. And obviously it hasn't proved to Tommy and I think I'm still leading the, that, that class and things are getting better. I, mean, I, I thought you'd been helping them to do all the... You. But anyway, um, oh, the, yeah. there's things that we have done, that they've done in the class, like, you know, we, oh, I think, I'm not going to name names because I can't remember, but we have the TV, we have all these different drawings, we have the tables, and the children, I believe, are comfortable in their class, so that's good. And before we go to the next question, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask anyone? What I want to add to that again is, although I didn't join 10 years ago, I've been here for a while now. Mm-hmm. I can I can say some things that I know. The choir has improved a lot. They have improved, and um, uh, I'm so grateful to God for that because you know we love we all love music. Music Absolutely. is therapeutic. Yes. That has been my area that I was I've been dreading within myself that oh God. Let God bring people who we play this, who we play that, because I remember it's only a um, pastor's son. And sometimes he even squeeze his face, you know, because he was struggling that time. Because we give glory to God now that we can come to church and dance. And, you know, yeah. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. And I think it is quite a general question. I don't know if anybody wants to add as to what they think has improved. I know some of us have just joined, but Uncle Basayo, Uncle Ayo, anyone, since she joined, Auntie Bosa, since she joined, Uncle Richard, Grandma. Yeah. Um, I, I've been in Kambi since the 7th of December last year. Oh, I, I used to go to London to my church. Mm. Even though in my church we have two keyboards, two drummers, two guitarists. I, if I'm not in church, nobody knows I'm not in church. But because I hadn't, I mean, been able to sign. So one day I just, I was just at home. I just put RCCG churches in Kambi. And it came 200, like 200, I mean, like, like practically I walked from my house here within five, seven minutes. I'm like, so I've been going to London because, um, and then I was shopping for a church to attend. Not that I said, this is where I want to go, but I just said, let me try this church. Believe me sincerely, when I came, the kind of welcome I got, I didn't have to go to another church because I'm a worker in the church, so I wasn't looking for a church where I'm going to show up, uh, Deacon, 
DK just attacked me, shook my hand, and then uh, yeah. Sister Ladun the same way, and um, Sister Tosu was really pulling my trousers that day. Ah. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, because, like, no, 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 musically, don't, don't. So, like, like, I felt so welcome, like, it didn't feel like I was coming into a, into a new church, so, I mean, so so that that is very good of this church. And even even the pastor wasn't around when I came. One day I just saw my phone rang. A pastor called me. I'm like, hey, I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just trying to say that you know the welcome was really good, and I I couldn't. I mean, I didn't have to look any further to say I was looking for another church. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm in here for society as well. Yes. Yeah, I really can testify to what Richard. You need to let people know your son in Christ. My name is I'm, I'm Mrs. Yesley Odukoy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I moved to Canville like uh, two months ago, so I, I was just I'm always home on the Sundays and I don't like sitting because I'm, I'm a worker in RCC gym. So I just I just googled RCC gym near me and I just saw. Uh, you know, the postcode, and I saw her number. I called her, she didn't pick. Oh. And about a couple of hours after she picked, she called me back and said, um, so I told her everything that I wanted to join a, an RCCG here. So I think that was, she gave me the address, but because I'm not driving, I couldn't walk. It was about 20, 28 minutes from my house. So I've been attending um, Church of England. So like two Sundays ago, she called me and said, we haven't seen you. And I said, okay, I don't have a car. I, I can't get in here, I can't trek and all of She said, okay, I'll send a number to you. You can be a boy, he's very nice. You can always come and pick here. And it's been awesome since that two Sundays ago. So I want to thank you all for welcoming me. And I'm part of the show, part of the family. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. And I just want to say that we could actually open a taxi services oh, yeah. in our CCG because Pastor, Pastor knows how to do that. But honestly, you know, we just always want to help people. We always want to bring. I think when I was at uni, like Pastor said, when I got my first car, um, I would pick all the youths and then drop them home again. And yeah, uncles always do the same. And I'm sure other people in the church do the same. So yeah, it's just been a blessing. Does anybody want to ask a sister? Any other? Okay, we'll come on. Grandma, this church for long, grandma. Grandma, I think you can't seven or eight years. Six years. Six years. Six years. Okay. Mr. Magrama was with us at Blackton 2 actually. Yes, yes. Yes. So grandma is just a family church. That is the like Pastor is very, very nice. And I said to my sister, we change the pastor in this church. I think. We won't allow that. So everybody very nice. You can talk to people easily. They are ready to help every time you need. Thank you, ma'am. I just appreciate the, we've all been talking about love in different um, shapes. It's just, it's the love, it's the togetherness in the church that I've just appreciated the most. Um, so everyone's talking about how they got into church, so I figured I'd talk about mine as well. I've known Pastor when, when she was auntie. <laughs> when she was auntie for you. <laughs> and I think part of the reason, cheeky as it is, when I came to church, was I thought you would continue calling me what you used to call me. Yeah. It, it changed. It changed because of, you know what your parents call you at home will be different from what they call you in school. Mm -hmm. We're in school now. Uh -huh. So I, I I got to know um, Pastor in the official capacity, mm -hmm. and a lot of <laughs> a lot of things got taken away, and a lot of things got added. Uh, so coming back to church, um, that was what brought me to church. And then I got to church and, you know, I only go where my wife wants to go. Oh. I'm a good husband. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so we came to our auntie for this church. Um, and then I met the rest of the family. 
I'd known Brother Bimbo from about a year or two before that. Well, not really known, I met him. Um, and then I met my sister Ladun, and I met Miami. And basically, it's just the love. It's just so much love in the church where we're together. We're, there, we're up on stage and we're praying for the spirit of togetherness and we're binding the spirit of... Um, yeah. But the thing is, we love each other and we encourage each other and we do things selflessly. A lot of things have happened in church that we... I, I know for a fact that no, nobody waited to be told to do certain things. We just show up one day and AC has appeared. We just showed up one day and, because I know the drums used to be red, but it wasn't wine, yeah. now they're green. It's not that somebody painted it. Somebody bought a new yeah, one. And then one time the TV just grew, boom. And then the, the guitar just grew. You know, people, all that love is, you know, and that's just what I appreciate most about the church. It's the fact that we're all together. I was talking to, my brother yesterday, and he said, I, I was telling him, I think I, I've been missing my midweek sessions, and we laughed, and he said, hey, it's your fault now, you don't want to talk to me anymore. I said, well, I called you on a Saturday, so technically this is midweek. So that love is just, it's just something, grammar, love, grammar, love, <laughs> auntie, big love. <laughs> brother, brother Richard, I remember Brother Richard's first day, it was it was it was kind of weird. As a matter of fact, I think that the the, the flesh took over that day. When he was saying I can draw, I was like, can I share? Me too, I can draw. No, actually, so when he said I'll play that, I was like, yeah, okay, that's good. And then he said I can draw, and then I can say, well, how many things do you want to do? But yeah, it's um. <laughs> It, it, it was good. It's just you know, so it's just the way we are, and it just you know, he had already, he had already, you know, it's like when you go and audition for a job. I mean, go for interview. Everything was already on the CV. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do that. You know, so it's just everyone. He had already learned to love even before he came to where the love was flowing. So I just appreciate that about about the church. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Mabino, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody to bad baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, brother, yeah. Um, there's a keyword here, everybody has youth, love, 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 love. But it's family that is for me. Without this love, there won't be a family. This church is a family. Um, I think we are two years now. We've been two, two years before coming to this church, in December 2022. And my first time in here, I felt a part of the family. And I felt loved. It brings me joy. I wanted to come to church every Sunday. I, I had experiences with churches, my wife, places. I'm not a fan of Nigerian churches at all. 
but for reasons for ever since I've been here it, it doesn't feel Nigerian and some of us in some of our departments we, we, we don't have anybody in departments but that's what we get for people everything gets done why? love and being among the family that's why we don't know just you know get things done easily when pastor calls me and see a number i i feel so i love to pick a call <laughs> because for some reasons i just feel calm and we we'll talk briefly anyway, but every time she calls me i feel love and i feel like a part of the family that that is what this church is and that is what we should continue to do. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. And I think that was just so heartfelt, right? Like all the love and everything. But I found that funny that we don't know who's in the department, but everything gets done. And it's true. I think it's really good that everybody is willing to help everyone. So just to appreciate the people that started first, we appreciate the whole church, but just to give a little something to the people that started first, we just have a tiny gift for you. And just a disclaimer, somebody bought Christmas gift bag instead of normal gift bag. So we just ask for you to forgive us. Um, so, yes. very much for sticking with us through thick and thin. Tommy, thank you for still being here. We appreciate you. Miami, thank you. Here you go. There you go, Pastor. Thank you. We appreciate everybody. This is for me. Thank you, everybody. Right. <laughs> and we just thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to Daniel for helping me to ask the questions. We appreciate you. Okay. Um, you can leave the chair. That's fine. We'll just say, just take a seat in a free seat. So I'll call up Bro, Uncle Basala.